Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Linda Rockwood, owner of Mohawk Valley GIS. We are a technology and GIS services business in Utica. I'd like to introduce you to our team. This is Dave, John, Kathy, and our mascot, Balto. Uh, the team all joined me in 2014. We, we have a mix of client work and also we have a handful of products that we do sell. And tonight I'm gonna share with you our New York snowmobile project from the data perspective. And, and I will mention um, the gentleman that just spoke before me. Um, almost everything you said is totally relevant to my presentation. Um, so thank you for that. Um, New York State has 11,000 miles of snowmobile trails. Our project has a lot of moving parts, but the main ones are here. Our website, where we promote the sport and also all our business sponsors. Our web map, our no reception needed trail app. Most snowmobile trails are in kind of rural, remote areas. Oop, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hang on. And our Garmin GPS overlay map. And uh, riders can use the web map to create routes. It's a lot like doing Google directions. And then they can share those routes out with the phone app or with their GPS receiver or with fellow riders. The data that feeds all this comes from the state and the snowmobile clubs. There are over 200 snowmobile clubs. And we spend a lot of time in the fall cleaning up and updating the data. Um, anywhere from 10 to 30% of the trail data changes every year. In New York, the trails are predominantly on private land. And that, that's important to remember. So our new feature for this year, we are introducing four different types of trail conditions. Um, club reported, GPS groomer tracking, crowdsourced rider activity data, and crowdsourced trail sense data. And tonight I'm just gonna focus on the rider activity data. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Waze traffic app. Um, we use our app to collect the GPS location of riders throughout the statewide system. Um, last winter we did a proof of concept, so this is a little bit of real data from last season. Um, the green is from the Android app and the red is from our iPhone app. So the public facing side of what we are doing this year um, looks a lot like, you know, Google traffic report. The red is where the traffic is. The red is where the party is. This is where everybody is riding. And if you want to be part of this, this is where you go. Um, from there, yellow to green, hardly any riders, all the way down to gray here. That means there's no riding activity, which would mean the trails are closed. Then we have the organizational side of this. So there are 25 states and 10 Canadian provinces that all have snowmobiling. And they're all overseen by an organization. So we have developed a dashboard that will let them consume all this data that we're collecting. Um, so what you see here, this is a trail with a 10th mile buffer around it and all those little green dots, that's where the riders actually are riding. So you can see here that where we think the trail is, it, it's not actually there. And this comes back to the private land issue again. It, it's really important that the trail data that we are pushing out to the riding public be as accurate as possible because the landowners, they get really annoyed if you're riding where you don't belong and then they take the trails away. Um, many other benefits to the organizations from all this crowdsourced rider data that we're collecting. Um, from a law enforcement safety standpoint, we are collecting average and maximum speed throughout the whole trail system. We also are collecting data that can support trespassing issues. From an economic standpoint, in New York State, $850 million in revenue from direct and indirect spending in a good snowmobile year. So the state has this pool of money every year that they use to give back out to all the clubs so they can maintain the trails. But the state has to like fight to hold on to that money every year. So this data supports their program. It, it proves that people are riding on these trails. Um, the last piece again relate, relates to the relationship of the clubs and the accuracy of the trails and the way the whole system works. So the money 
it's given out to the clubs based on the amount of grooming they actually do. And, and it's a little bit of an honor system right now. They have to keep logs of their time and their mileage. This data that we're collecting, if a club says, hey, we groomed you know, all season long, every week, all the time, and this data, all you have to do is look, and if it shows nobody was riding these trails for an entire week, hey, <laughs> you didn't groom the trails. So to close, um, as developers, for us, th this is a foray into big data. Um, without a doubt, we've had to explore different server environments for how to best handle all this. We need to keep all this data historically. We need to let these organizations consume this data for the whole season. Um, in a good year in New York, you'll have 125,000 SLED registrations. Um, we don't expect 125 people to be using the app, but, but it is still high volume. Um, in addition, th this has brought us several new opportunities. One is a partnership with a Canadian company, Atlas Tracks, out of Ottawa. They sell GPS devices and a satellite communication plan that is used for the groomers that maintain the trails. So we, we both are marketing to the same 35 organizations, um, so we're like a natural fit for each other. Um, the other is we now have two new revenue streams. So our trail app is free, but these four new trail conditions that we're offering, that's going to be a $14.95 in-app purchase this year. Part of that revenue we do give back to the snowmobile clubs as profit sharing. This whole project wouldn't exist if it wasn't for those clubs. And the other revenue piece is this, this dashboard um, that the organizations will be able to use. So I will be here after the program tonight if anybody wants to come up and talk, ask questions. Um, we are looking to hire another developer in 2017. If anyone knows someone, um, it would not be remote, though you would have to be in Utica. Um, and we're, we're not seeking funding, um, but certainly I, I would, would be glad to meet or connect with someone who might be able to mentor us. Thank you very much.